poetry has been around for probably as long as language has been around. You know, as soon as people started to speak any language, any way, and make utterances to communicate, they probably started playing with language right away. Even children today love to play with language. That's why you love Dr. Seuss, you know. It's the language that children are learning made fun. They're learning how to be playful with language. But people could also learn the magic of language, right? That language has power. That can be magical, spiritual, religious. You know, a, a prayer or a chant to make the rain come so that your crops will grow for the sun to return so it'll be summer. You can't just look at the sky and say, please rain, but you sing songs or chants that are magical language, magical words. Poetry. That's what poetry probably began as. Over centuries and millennia, everyone writes poems, every kind of person from soldiers, there's clearly famous poems written by people who were soldiers, to statesmen, you know, legislators, to presidents and queens and queen kings, even popes. I mean, I personally have published uh, poetry by, by popes and by a president and by movie stars and actors and athletes, you name it. Uh, poetry has been with humanity probably from the beginning. Oh, certainly it's changed. Everything changes, right? Music changes, dance styles, clothes styles. Everything changes. But the grain of truth of the origin of poetry is so ancient in every culture and every language. It probably means that it's necessary, that it's something we need, that it's something we value despite how we kind of dismiss poetry sometimes as funny, cute, you know, we have limericks and things that are just fun and children's books and greeting cards and jingos for commercials. But at its heart, poetry remains necessary and important to us all.